uh, welcome to uh, today's Facebook Live. So um, before we get started, I'm going to hang around for a bit and um, just share this to my group. So let's just check that we're live and wait for a few people to hopefully join us. Uh, there I am. So let's just share this. Okay. Okay. So I am now live on my page and live in my group and hopefully we'll start to get a few people joining us. So before I dive into the content, um, let's, um, I'll firstly want to introduce myself. Uh, let me get my notes back so that I know what I'm talking about. And then we can start to dive into the good stuff. So, so I've got my laptop over here in case you're wondering what on earth I'm doing. <laughs> there we go. Hey Wendy, lovely to see you. Uh, so, first of all, a bit of an introduction. Um, I'm Colette Broomhead, uh, as the name of this page uh, might suggest. And um, I'm a business coach and I help people who want to leave their nine to five and start a business uh, doing what they love. And that's something that's very close to my heart because it's something um, that I've done myself. And um, I came from a 13 year uh, corporate career uh, working for a FTSE 30 company. Um, my background, um, I have worked in um, marketing of all kinds. I've done customer relations, I've done product marketing, customer marketing, email marketing, um, you name it, CRM, um, and um, today I want to talk to you specifically about blogging. Um, so I actually started um, my own personal blog, which is a food blog, um, back in 2014 during my maternity leave. Um, it was a hobby, it was something to do to keep my mind active, um, I love to cook, um, I love to write, and so it seemed like a fun thing to to try and do. I wanted to kind of check out this blogging world and see see what what it was all about. Um, and I very quickly um, became completely absorbed and obsessed by it, and um, grew my blog and loved it. And it opened my eyes to um, a whole new world of opportunities. And for the first time, it occurred to me that my career didn't have to be that path that I always thought it would be climbing the corporate ladder and that there were other exciting opportunities for me to do something um, that I was really passionate about and that was all mine um, and that would allow me the flexibility to spend more time with my family, um, to work from home and basically to have a life where my work is much more um, at one with the rest of my life rather than these kind of two separate things of you know, work life, home life. Um, and so now I'm doing just that. I'm loving it and I want to help as many other people um, as possible to be able to do the same. Um, and blogging is a real passion of mine. Like I say, not only was it the place that I started, um, but it's a place where so many people can start. It's such a great opportunity. These days, blogging is so available and um, easy to start. Um, that it's a great place if you're in that place right now where you you know you want to leave your nine to five but you're not too sure um, you know where to begin then blogging is potentially a great place to start or perhaps you've already set up your business um, then blogging is a great tool to fuel that business and to really get it moving forward so as you could tell I'm a massive fan of blogging and um, I wanted to come and share a few of the benefits um, that blogging can have um, when it comes to creating and growing um, a business that's going to allow you to leave your nine to five and spend your time um, doing what you love. 
So let's dive in. So um, if I'm glancing over here, it is because of my notes. <laughs> um, so first of all, why is blogging so important for your business? Well, let's take a step back a minute and just, I want to talk to you about the customer life cycle um, and something called the know, like and trust factor, which I'm sure many of you have heard of. By the way, if you're watching this live or if you're watching the replay, do say hello in the comments. Tell me who you are. Do you have a business already? If so, what do you do? Um, or maybe you're just still thinking about starting one, in which case, what is it that you're hoping to start doing? I'd love to know more about you. So say hello in the comments um, and let me know, let me know all about you. Um, so back to the customer life cycle. So the know, like and trust factor is basically the kind of journey that each one of us has to go through um, in order to get to the point where we're ready to buy from buy from someone. Um, so that there is that journey that we all go through. Very rarely will you get straight to the point like that without this kind of uh, emotional, I guess, almost journey that, that you go through to the point where you're ready to buy someone. And that, that journey is that you have to know someone exists, you have to like them, and you have to trust them. And that, that could be a person or a business um, in order for you to feel ready to part with your well-earned money um, and, and buy from them. Um, so take that concept and now let's go back to talking about blogging. So the key benefits, some of the key benefits of blogging are, number one, they help you to increase your audience. They help you to attract your ideal clients. Hey guy, nice to see you. Um, so by blogging, you're, you're, you're able to reach more people. So that important no factor from no like and trust um, is there. You, by creating valuable content um, and promoting it through social media or wherever it may be, you can reach more people. Um, hey, Laura. <laughs> um, but also um, blogging has really valuable um, SEO impact. So SEO, for those of you who don't know, is search engine optimization. And by creating um, consistent content on your website, on your blog, um, you are making it much easier for search engines like Google to know what your website is about, to know what your content is about, and to send the right people to it. So blogging is going to help you reach more people. It's going to help you attract more of your ideal customers and for them to know who you are. And when you're just starting out, that's so important. Wendy, I started following Colette on her food blog and I've never looked back, having now started my own blog. So if you're thinking you're starting your own blog, listen to my little, ah, oh, thank you, Wendy, that's really kind. <laughs> um, so, okay, so no like and trust factor. So we've established that blogging is definitely going to help you when it comes to getting more people to know who you are and to bring more people to your business um, and actually not just people but your actual ideal clients the people who are most suitable to work with you or to buy from your business so number two once people know who you are you want to get them to like you you want to start to build that relationship and again blogging is a great way to do that blogging you're basically providing free valuable content to people and if you're creating content that is content that is your ideal clients are interested in, then they're going to love you for that. If you're telling them something that they don't know or showing them how to do something that they want to know how to do um, or even just entertaining them um, in a way that they find particularly entertaining as your ideal clients, then they're going. To, that relationship is going to build and they're going to start to like you. Um, it shows your personality through your through your blog posts whether they be written posts, audio, video, or a combination of all of that, it allows people to see your personality. It allows your beliefs, your passions, why you're doing what you're doing to all shine through. And you will start to attract the people that you want to attract to your business. And they will start to um, kind of grow in that relationship with you. Not only that, 
but you can start to actually grow a community. You can start to engage people, encourage people to, you know, start chatting in the comments se um, section. You can um, invite people to join your other communities and social media. Perhaps you have a Facebook page or a Facebook group, a Pinterest board, um, whatever it may be. You can start to kind of get people into your world and to join your tribe and to build on that relationship that you've got with them. So we've got no, we've got like, and now we've got trust. So yes, of course, your blog helps you to build trust. Um, and that's not just trust in like, you know, the fact that people want to know that you're honest and you're not going to con them. But people also want to know that you know what you're talking about. You need to have some credibility. Um, so, you know, yourself, if you if you're going to buy something from someone, you want to be confident that they are going to be able to deliver um, on what you're paying for. And in order for that to happen, you need to build credibility. And again, when you're just starting out, that's that can be it can feel really difficult because there's so many other people out there. You'll look at your competitors and you'll question yourself and kind of think, why would anyone buy from me? There's all these other people, you know, who've been doing it for way longer. And by blogging, you can start to build that credibility and, you know, set yourself up as an expert in your field, as a thought leader. Um, and by growing that relationship and showing that you know what you can do, um, you will start to grow trust. In fact, there's a there's a really great quote. Uh, let me find it. I've written it in my notes. Um, OK, I, I'm going to have to read this out because I don't know it off by heart, but. Traditional marketing and advertising is telling the world you're a rock star. Content marketing, i.e. blogging being a big part of it, um, is showing the world that you are one. And that's a quote by a guy called Robert Rose. Um, and I love that quote because it just says it in a nutshell. These days, pe people are getting more and more immune to kind of ads and, you know, more traditional forms of advertising. Um, it's no longer good enough to tell people that you know what you're talking about. You have to show them and blogging is the way that you do that. Um, Guy, from an SEO perspective, should you word blogs carefully to repeatedly name drop specific things you want to crop up with Google, etc.? Um, yes, so not... not <laughs> there's, it used to be a thing where people... I can't remember the term for it, but basically people kind of... Yeah, repeated the same keywords and phrases over and over again. Keyword stuffing, I think it might be called. Anyway, something like that. Um, and that, and, and, and Google is wise to that now. And actually, if you do that too much, you'll end up having a sort of a detrimental effect. So when you're writing a blog post, essentially, before you write it, think what you're writing about and what you would envisage your ideal clients searching for on Google to find your post. So as an example, um, you might write a post about um, how to how to train a dog. Um, and so you would expect that your um, ideal clients would be typing something like how to train a dog or training my dog or dog training. Um, and, and so you basically before you start to write your blog, blog post, Think what those kind of keywords are, um, and and yes, you you want to include them. So the the key places to include them are your actual title, so your kind of main blog title, your main heading. Um, make sure you've got your kind of keyword or phrase in there. Um, you generally want to have it in your um, URL, um, and then you'll want to um, kind of dot it about in your in your um, blog post but you don't need to stuff it full you don't need to be kind of like constantly make it natural it's much more important that the post itself is useful um, and it comes across as natural um, and you know that it's valuable because actually the biggest thing for for search engine optimization um, and for kind of um, for boosting your way up search um, organically at least is um, having kind of people coming to it and showing Google that it's a valuable piece of content. So you want people linking to you and um, you want people sharing it. You want people coming and reading it. And gradually as that happens, um, you will start to work your way up the ranks. So yes, keywords are definitely important, um, but the, there's this other side to it as well. And, and actually having, making sure it's valuable content in the first place is also really important. Um, so I hope, I hope that answers your question. Um, so, 
uh, we were talking about credibility. So we do have now your know, like and trust factor. All of those th three things can be achieved um, through blogging. Um, great advice. Good. Thanks, Guy. Um, if you're still not convinced, I have, I've uh, jotted down a couple of stats um, which I think are very, very telling. So um, here, I'm going to hit you with some stats now. Um, so B2B marketers that use blogs get 67% more leads than those that don't. So if you're looking to generate leads, if you want to get people on your email list, um, then blogging is a great way to do that. So not only are you going out and attracting new customers, but you're then deepening that relationship and getting them onto your email list by providing kind of valuable content um, for them. Um, and once you've got them on your email list, then you can just deepen and deepen that relationship. And I mean, your email list is, is gold. Um, another stat for you. Uh, companies who blog receive 97% more links to their website. So that's massive. Again, go talking about you know how links are important for SEO, for getting you found, getting you up the search um, ranks. Getting those links is so important, so key. It's basically people, it's, it's attracting more and more people to your website. It's growing the buzz around your business. Um, more potential customers knowing who you are and potentially being interested in what you want to do what you're selling, um, so that's absolutely key. And then my last stat for you, 45% um, of marketers say that blogging is the number one most important piece of their content strategy. Um, and that, I mean, you know, like I say, I've come from a, you know, a corporate background. Blogging, blogging is important whether you are a one person business or whether you are a FTSE 30 business blogging is important it will boost your business it will help you find more customers it will help you grow um, build a relationship with those customers hey Kerry um, and it will help you ultimately hey Jana uh, it will help you ultimately make more sales and and you know at the end of the day that's what it's all about so if you haven't been able to tell <laughs> over the course of this live, I am super passionate about blogging. I truly believe that it is a really, really valuable tool in any business. Whether you are just starting out as a blogger and you want to turn your blog into a business, or whether you have a business that you've set up and you want to kind of boost it and really give it some momentum, then a blog will so be able to do that. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's easy and that, you know, you can just do it like that. It takes work. It takes effort. Um, but it is so worth it because not only is it going to boost your business, but it will do it long term. If you think about a blog post, once you've written and created, yes, it takes time. You know, you need to make it valuable. You need to, you know, maybe research it. It may take time to do that. It'll take time to put it all together to maybe find your images, create your images and all that kind of stuff. It does take time, but once it's there, once it's done, it will continue to add value to your business way after you've hit publish. I've got posts that I wrote months ago that are still bringing me in leads and likes and you know new people who have never heard of me. And you know that, that value is inestimable it's you know it's fantastic so every time you write a blog post don't think of it in terms of this is taking me so much time I haven't got time to do this think of it you are basically putting money in the bank you know if you're doing it right you're putting money in the bank because that blog post is going to sit there doing your business good for month after month after month after you've after you've hit publish so there ends my sermon. I hope I have managed to convince you um, how fantastic blogging is when it comes to boosting your business. Um, if you've enjoyed this, then I would love to invite you to come and join my Facebook group uh, business class uh, where we have loads more fantastic content on blogging and all other business related topics. Um, we have a live uh, Q&A every Thursday. Um, on various topics uh, where everyone's welcome to come and join um, and we have all sorts of other fun stuff going on um, every day so do come and join I'll pop a link in the comments once this live has finished 
Um, and I would also like to um, point you to the uh, free checklist, which you are very welcome to download. It's a blog post checklist and it will tell you um, each step that you need to go through whenever you write a blog post, right from planning and choosing your topic <coughs> through to writing it, creating your images, um, and then on to promoting it um, and getting it out there to your ideal clients. Um, so it's a really handy little checklist. Um, if you'd like a copy of that, then the link's in the description. So go grab that now. Uh, Jana, yes, I agree. If you continue to provide value to your readers, they will look up to you as a person of authority. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's all about kind of reciprocity. So these days, people expect more. They want, you know, like I say, kind of flashy ads. If you imagine you're wanting to go in, I don't know, um, oh, I can't think of a, an example. You're, you're, you're wanting, you're getting married, and you want a wedding photographer. I always use a wedding photographer example for some reason. Um, you know, are you going to go to the company you've never heard of who have this big flashy ad in the newspaper, or are you going to go with a photographer whose blog you've been following for the past six months, who's been giving you all these great tips about how to pose for your wedding photos and you know this, that, and the other? You're going to go for the person that you already feel connected with, that you already have a relationship with every time. So blog, <laughs> blog to boost your business. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I don't think I've seen any other questions. Um, if you do have questions or if you're watching this in the replay, do pop them in the comments um, and I will make sure that I come back and answer them. And uh, yes, come join me in business class. And don't forget to get your uh, blog post checklist. Thanks for watching. See you. Bye.